ladies and gentlemen and my friend experts in psychiatry well uh, we have listened to these papers and i also thank my layman colleagues for these illuminating papers that they gave us well uh, we had an insight into some of the problems of pakistani families and we also saw how human identity has developed from age to age according to the changes in methods of production and what effect these changes have had on the ex artistic expression of the man we have also seen something about known something about the cultural condition of present day pakistan how medieval elements are still enduring here well uh, i thank my layman colleagues well my expert friends could expect only that much from us we could not help you in probing the biological causes of psychiatric diseases we could only give you uh, an inkling into the form and pressure of time as we know it well uh, for instance uh, there was talk of crisis of identity i would very much like to confine this discussion to our present day pakistani conditions you have heard so much about the medieval elements uh, refusing to depart although their time is over well uh, i'd only make one observation and that is that uh, minus these medieval elements the prospect with the condition of present day humanity presents before us is uh, not very conducive to mental health not very conducive to mental health well uh, it's uh, the whole world is just like uh, one country a country without government well different nations have come together uh, the relationship between one nation and another nation is that of hostility as if uh, different Uh, political cultural collectivities in that one country without the government they are jostling together for their survival and for their dominance according to their special character and according to their power relations their position in the power relations of the world and each collectivity getting out of shape in the process well uh, we pakistanis uh, we are facing our own problem i would only like to add well i agree that change in methods of production go very far in evolving our ideas in our development in our cultural development but i would say that uh, political experience also counts for much for instance uh, as far as uh, this crisis of identity for us the pakistanis is concerned well you know that we had given a challenge to history the indo muslim community had the elements of nationhood in it but those elements of nationhood had to be fused and matured into a nation in a new uh, geopolitical environment in a new geopolitical setting well how far have we succeeded there this separation of uh, east pakistan that has been a bitter reminder that the ties which we thought bound us we are very tenuous and fragile well um, this uh, uh, separation was not like a division it was not like division of germany into west germany or east germany east pakistan is now a different country altogether and again and again we are hearing well uh, it is being drummed into our mind well if you do not do this then pakistan will be no more if you do not do this then pakistan will be no more that certainly not a very healthy influence on our mind to know that uh, uh, this country in which we are living and with which we have identified ourselves uh, doesn't exist in its own right that uh, its existence is only conditional or contingent if we do not if we are not loyal to pakistan ideology and then we go well what is that pakistan ideology and how are we going to be loyal to it and uh, again and again reminding us well uh, pakistan ka matlab kya la ilaha illallah that's right that's our ideal 
but uh, why should it be reminded and why should it be said that if we are sinners, then Pakistan will be no more? And in what capacity are we going? To? My friends, you protest too much. And uh, when you protest too much, I, I, I have a, uh, just a suspicion that there is something lurking in your subconscious which you are trying to suppress by shouting at the top of, at the top of your voice. Well, if you, if, you, if you do not do this, if you do not do this, Pakistan will go to dogs. So uh, this uh, conception of the environment in which we are living, uh, you can yourself see it's not going to have a very healthy influence. Then how we have managed our public affairs? Well, uh, have we built up some healthy traditions, uh, some norms of public conduct? Have we done that? What we find is, as soon as one man is installed in a seat of authority, it may be a high seat of authority or it may be a low seat of authority. Uh, he has just to make two points in his inaugural address. And the first is imprecation, imprecating and denouncing his predecessors, all as if he has saved the country from hell. And the second is to give an assurance that with his advent a new era has opened in the affairs of Pakistan. Again, again to be followed by the same phenomenon, the same phenomenon, so that our progress has been like uh, jumping from one crisis to another crisis. And my friends, unless there is a continuity in our public life, we fail in acquiring that sense of stability and solidarity, which is the first condition for, men, for mental peace. Uh, again, you find what form of government is suited to our country. Well, uh, people would say, uh, it's presidential form, and they would go one step forward, and they would say, well, it is dictator, it is dictatorship. Well, uh, our exper ex experience of democracy has been interrupted so often by these interludes of military rules. Now, I make one general observation, and uh, that observation is based on our study of history, political history of the world, and that observation is, that a bad civilian government in many essential respects is better than a good military government. <laughs> because, uh, well, my friend, well, I am just trying to tell you something about the environment. Can you stop this? Please stop it. Stop it, my dear. All right, please stop. You don't have to stop it. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Friends, I was only telling you something about the political environment in which we are living and you will bear witness that this political environment is far from being healthy and it is not conducive to mental well-being. This is what I said. I am not against this government or that government. The general proposition, you also, if you have been students of political philosophy, you must have read somewhere that good government is no substitute for self-government because that creates a sort of inferiority complex in us, as if the, these people are not fit to rule themselves. They cannot look after ourselves. This sense of inferiority is instilled into our mind. Well, that is what I was pointing out, and that is very much relevant to the subject under discussion <laughs> in this in Well, I know that the time is closing. Well, uh, just uh, one or two observations. Uh, I think they are not very biting. They will not injure anybody. And it is this. That is, uh, there has been 
a chaos of values, it is of course a transitional phase where what is the standard of res respectability in our society? The standard of respectability is uh, wealth and power. However, it may be acquired by chickenry, by gangsterism, well, uh, uh, just to become one of the privileged persons, because uh, that person, known as a common Pakistani citizen, does not exist in this zoo of animals, in this zoo of human, human animals. That, that, does, that doesn't exist. Well, again, you, you will see, well, uh, religion has been a source of values for us. But more and more religion is being politicized. And I am telling this because I, I believe firmly that uh, religious provides the right guidance for us. When I see religion uh, being politicized, well, I cannot but uh, say something in protest to this movement. I, I would say religion has been a great source of solace to us. But what is it today? Today it is more and more of formalism, of conformity, of organization, and let me say, of coercion also. Okay. Well, these things have their impact on the family life also. And you might have observed uh, one paradox, very glaring paradox. Well, realistically, and uh, I may say statistically, we are a poor country. But you go to any Karachi market, you stand by any Karachi road, what will be your impression? Your impression will be that it's a spectacle of affluence. Of course, affluence run right, but it's a, nevertheless a spectacle of affluence. On the one hand, cost of living, getting higher and higher, rising higher and higher. And on the other hand, well, that I may say, the compelling urge, the compelling urge uh, to, uh, for a more conspicuous style of living, both of them going together in rising spirals. Our uh, marriage system, our, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, our family system, that has also undergone a change. Of course, in the medieval ages, it was rightly pointed out that so many ills were due to uh, ignorance and uh, to superstitions and to oppressions and to repressions of different kinds, uh, to belief in determinism, lack of uh, initiative, to so much of a squalor, to so much of these constrictions, these restrictions, and these rigid customs, these ills were due so much to all these things. But uh, today what I find in this, these nuclear families, educating the children has become a problem, uh, giving our daughters in marriage, that has become a problem, uh, controlling our young men, that has become a problem, making two ends meet, that has become a problem. The natural result is that <coughs> there is a mood of depression and a mood of boredom. Uh, if there were marriage squabbles in the old family, well, today there is uh, a apathy in, uh, our mod uh, in our modern homes. Or in this drudgery of work and the resulting depression, uh, how is it relieved? Uh, I may say it is relieved by the stupor of uh, TV shows or of cinemas or uh, of, uh, I may say, uh, tournaments of hockey and uh, cricket. Well, that's again a settled, settled boredom under the, uh, under the guise of very, excite, very hectic and unhealthy excitement. So that has become the fact. If we go outside our home, we meet with bad manners at every step, uh, from the shopkeeper or from the conductor in the, in the bus. And uh, if you look to the traffic, well, uh, uh, you begin to wonder why only so many accidents occur on the Karachi homes. And at every step, you have hazards. Within the uh, homes, well, uh, you have got the fear of crimes. Your child may be kidnapped. A decoy, a decoy may break in your home. Well, when you step outside the home, then you, there are, you face these hazards at every step. Well, uh, my friends, I'll again tell you one thing. That is, uh, we could only give you a 
picture of what we feel, that is the feeling, the pressure of the time as we are living it. Well, um, uh, and I know the limitations of psychiatrists also, because they can cure this disease, but they cannot prevent this disease. Well, if these conditions persist, and here is again a relevance of my talk to the subject, if these con nothing is done about these conditions, well, to change these conditions, then the thing will be that there will be uh, more and more psychiatric clinics in the country and there will be larger and larger number of the patients, well, uh, which is again not a very, very healthy symptom. Well, uh, and these, uh, these conditions can be changed only by inner culture and by change of objective conditions. Well, unless that is done, well, uh, you psychiatrists, you will have your hands full and uh, one day any of us may come to you seeking your help. <laughs>